Ahoy! Artifacts are a huge part of what we're getting in the expansion. A new weapon tier that has special effects on unique weapons, so basically an extension of the current existing named weapons, though they typically seem to have at least equally good or better drop rates than named weapons. And these come with entirely game-changing perks, and I want to go through them and look at them just from the perk side today. We're not going to talk about farming them and everything, just talk about what I think impact on balance and general playstyles will be. We're going to start with the weapons and then we go through all the armor and all the jewelry as well, of course. Keep in mind, when looking at this, some of these things are currently bugged. So the values for things like Empowering Whirling Blade, for example, might be off on your database. The um, amount of attributes that you may actually get may be off. That is not necessarily 100% accurate. There are some behind-the-scenes scaling things that are not working properly at the moment with the expansion, with the gear score increase, as far as I understand it. So disregard that, we're just purely focusing on on the effects uh, that all these new things have. And the first one here is the Butcher, which comes with Bloodletting, bleeds last 33% longer, and this works on both weapons, along with Jagged Worlds, Whirling Blade inflicts bleed, dealing 10% weapon damage for 6 seconds. Very cool overall in terms of the concept, uh, obviously very much built towards something like SNS plus Spear or SNS plus Rapier. Those are the obvious choices with this. I have a concern though, like obviously this comes with Kingly Jack, so you have a little bit of a bleed here, uh, you have a little bit of a bleed uh, from the Jagged Worlds, you get two bleeds from the sword, that's that's pretty much it, but the rest comes from your secondary weapon, and depending on your build and playstyle, uh, some bleeds already get very close to the duration cap, because there, there are caps for that, and I don't know, or I don't think at least, that that's changed in the expansion, and... I don't know what will happen in that regard if, if this will be um, if this will effectively be overcapping that. Uh, and at that point also if it will actually matter much. Because if you think about it, uh, sure, like you can get, I think the cap is currently uh, 20 seconds and you can get uh, like an increase from your ring, from, from bloodletting, you can get an increase from dex, you can even get an increase from int depending on the build, like rapier builds have that perk as well. Uh, so you can get pretty close to that, and if you get, went well beyond that, if you actually had an uncapped thing where you can get 33% on top of that, how often does that matter? How often is a bleed gonna <laughs> tick someone out after 20 seconds? How many engages, how many fights last longer than that, or how many times do you not have the opportunity to refresh the bleed by then? I don't think it's that many, and I think that's what's gonna hold this back a little bit. Uh, I think this would have been more effective if it was bleed damage, and that makes me question a little bit how effective this will ultimately be. We're moving on to the next one, that's just my thoughts for now. The next one is Finisher, a new Rapier. Um, very much in the in the PvE playstyle that we're seeing with Rapier, we have Finisher Harmony as the perk here. Attacks against bleeding targets deal 15% more damage and reduce flourish, and, uh, f flourish cooldown by 5%. One second cooldown uh, works on both weapons. And that, I think, in comparison to the Butcher, is just... A whole of a lot more impactful, right? Like this is extra damage. Like you apply any bleed, and everything you do uh, does 15% more damage. That is going to have a bigger impact. So for bleed builds, bleed playstyle, this just seems like the better choice. I, like the only way I would see the other one is if you're going for a, a spear offhand and you don't want to run a rapier, right? And then you have deadly flourish here, which is unfortunately unchanged. Again, values may be completely off here, but. The effect itself is still, it increases the damage of Flourish, which is actually not very impactful at all. It's a very minor amount of your damage. And then you have Keen Tondo, which is nicer now, by the way, because uh, this is a, a damage reduction as well. It applies a 10% weaken as well, a weakness it says, but it's weakened, I think. So also interesting here that you have two weapon perks, right? You have two different weapon perks on the same weapon. That was something that uh, used to be very, very, very early days. And it used to be possible, then they removed that very quickly. Uh, for balancing reasons, so that's also coming back here in this particular shape of these artifacts. The next is the Warhammer Spark of Mjolnir. This was the one that I'm pretty sure we saw in one of the images. Um, now, I'm not sure if all of these designs are final, right? Because these icons, I'm pretty sure I just like the default uh, new tier or something. I don't think all of these styles here are how the weapons actually look in game. So I'm pretty sure it's actually the Lightning Warhammer. And I think that's going to be the case for a few other weapons as well. Uh, I'd be surprised if Freya's Francisca was just uh, just this normal pirate hatchet. So, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, just wanted to point that out. Uh, Mjolnir's Blessing, 99% of the hammer damage is converted to lightning, and you deal 20% more lightning damage with both 
weapons. Uh, this is where I guess the new perk comes in. There's the new uh, effect that deals extra lightning damage on your armor. This is the weapon that can actually use it. This is the one that actually benefits from this. And this is kind of cool in so far that no one will specifically counter build lightning damage, I think. So you're kind of safe from like any uh, amulet things going on, for example. And then uh, this comes with a very interesting other effect as well, which is Spark. Mighty Gavel causes a lightning strike that causes uh, that inflicts a 50% weaken for 7 seconds. I think this could be very potent. Uh, there are more cleanses now with, with the introduction of Flail, but I think the overall damage output that you can do with this, as well as this massive weaken on an ability that was previously not even PvP suitable, for example, uh, yeah, I think that could be very, very interesting. And you get Refreshing Might and Gavel along with that, obviously, and you get Refreshing Moves, so you uh, get that up even more often. By the way, uh, I should mention this, this random perk here, you can reroll that with certain resources. Uh, rumor has it that you can actually lock a specific perk on the last slot. I haven't fully confirmed that, but it seems like that's going to be the case as well. Uh, if that's the case, then obviously you can just make this your personal best in slot in terms of what you want to have and for, for your perks. A refreshing move on Hammer wouldn't be my priority, so you kind of can't replace this one, but also not terrible. And I think the place with this thing is going to be entirely different anyways. Uh, yeah, what is interesting here is that this is a little bit different, right? We, we get to this uh, weapon a bit later, but um, we have the Great Axe that also has converted damage. But uh, the Great Axe has a specific mention of scaling with intelligence. Uh, this does not seem to be the case for the hammer. The, the hammer just seems to be lightning damage and the weaken, but it's still uh, it's very much a strength weapon afterward. So yeah, a bit different, but I like it. Then we have Scorpion Sting. Uh, you've heard about this before. The devs have mentioned this. Javelin now does 160% weapon damage and pulls the target towards you. Along with that, you get Sundering Javelin and Trenchant Strikes. I <laughs> don't know what's up with Trenchant Strikes here. Um, that's not really what most people use on a spear. Uh, I, I would not use that. <laughs> I, I don't know if they like... It, maybe there's like a CC long enough after the pull or like you, you do this into a sweep and then maybe that's the idea, but... Uh, I think that kind of like gimps this weapon a little bit. Like even Sundering Javelin, I would argue is not necessarily the best perk to have on a weapon, but um, I think you can't, you're missing out on a lot of good damage perks here, which is a similar issue with the Butcher, by the way, right? You only have um, Keenly Jacked and Permanent Burning Blade. You can't get that much strong, interesting stuff. So sure, I could see this uh, being like a fun thing in duels and for trolling, but I don't know how much effectiveness it will have outside of that. It, it depends a lot on... Uh, how good this pull is. If this pull has like an infinite range as well, probably not. Um, so like if you could yeet this at a healer at a far distance and, and pull them all the way to like to the point in a war, then sure, uh, this would be very impactful, but I doubt that's gonna be the case. So we'll have to see about the specifics here. I tried to go to Scorpio and get it yesterday. And of course, <sighs> I got the musket again. So yeah, moving on. <laughs> Speaking of muskets, we actually have a good musket here, or a cool musket at least. So musket got a very significant rework, we haven't talked about that yet. Um, people have done some testing with it, there are some problems with it at the moment. Uh, might talk about that in the near future as well. But generally, uh, the concept of the musket is be more in like middle range, like 30 to 50 meters is I think the recommended range for maximum damage output. And you do uh, a lot of... Yeah, like a lot of trapping stuff as well, I think, is, is what they're encouraging. And the mechanic goes exactly in the direction. So the perk here is extra levers, traps and sticky bomb cooldown reduced by 25%. Uh, then you have accelerating traps along with that for your movement speed, and you also get the bleed on the trap, and you get mending sticky bomb, which also heals you for the damage done. Of course, if you stack that with a trap, you get the other lifestyle effect from that, so you're just going to have ridiculous amounts of, of lifesteal overall, especially because both perks here are also on weapon and then you can lock your last perk. <laughs> I think this is extremely spicy. This is uh, very much a very cornered playstyle, I would say, because you get upgrades for two perks, and you get perk effects for two perks. Again, this is normally not possible. So this weapon says you are using traps and you are using sticky bombs, and I think that's maybe not the best. I would prefer if it was just like a tie to, to one ability and say like this just amplifies uh, traps, and then there's other things that you can do along with that to, to somehow utilize more effects. That's not what they're doing here. Um, so yeah, it's for a very specific playstyle, but I think it will be fairly good at that specific playstyle, especially when you have other things. I think it was um, 
stopping power. I don't, I don't know which one it was. Uh, one of the other perks also reduces your cooldowns now by, I think, 50% when it hits uh, on the muskets. So you can reduce the cooldown of your traps and your bombs even further. And, and the bombs also get thrown quicker. So you're just consistently spamming these ability and really just hoping that anyone uh, gets near one of your traps. Then we have the Abyss. You know about this one, I don't need to say much. It's the inch scaling great axe. It's converted 99% of its damage into void and it will scale from intelligence if your intelligence is higher than your strength. And also you deal 20% more damage when below 100% mana, which I think the secondary perk is, is ridiculous. Like that's an insane amount of extra damage on top of this already very strong perk, which honestly seems kind of unnecessary because you're gonna, you know, obviously you're gonna be below mana below 100% mana most of the time, uh, unless you constantly crit, and I don't, I don't know, I don't think this, this needs to be on this, like, it makes sense for, like, Spark of Melia to have that, that extra lightning damage, uh, because your secondary weapon, that, that's kind of whatever, um, but uh, this doesn't have the int conversion, so it's not completely as powerful, and it, it has the weaken instead, but this is just more damage most of the time, and, and this is already a very strong weapon, and int is already a very strong uh, skill tree for damage output, so kind of concerning. And then along with that, this weapon also has some of the best perks, right? It comes with Abyssal Attunement as well as Refreshing Move. Uh, this is not actually 5%, again, the values are off, but it's it's very good. It's very good in many ways, and then you can just uh, drop, if you can choose, you can either drop an Enfeebling Maelstrom on it, or I think what will be more likely is Insatiable Graph Well. Uh, I think with a change to Insatiable Graph Well, specifically for damage and you using an Int weapon, uh, that will be an extremely likely contender for this last slot. We will find out if that's actually possible, but yeah, that, I think this is just going to be ridiculously good, and uh, I think this is going to be a significant portion of the bruisers and wars now, and then you have to like kind of counterbalance it by putting some physical players in uh, in order to not just have elemental damage and just be fully countered by, by elemental version, basically. But even, that, even then, you're not fully countered by that because you have... Uh, well, not fully countered by Opals, I guess, because you still have, like, Maelstrom and stuff, right? And then we have Inferno. So Inferno is um, kind of the counterpart, again, or, but more of the counterpart to uh, to the Hammer, really. Because uh, here, again, if this uh, if it's higher, then this weapon scales with strength. But this doesn't get converted into physical damage. This is still fire damage afterwards. And this comes with a secondary effect, which is Hellfire's Fury, a 20% damage when you hit a target within 5 meters. I think this is very interesting, right? Obviously, you have the Incinerate perk on here, you have some Vicious. Uh, this would also, obviously, work very well with the Flamethrower playstyle. Um, but then, I'm also thinking, like, you could also just use this from range for a while. It's just bonus damage if they get close. So I think there's a lot of interesting flex potential here with this fire staff. Just weird combinations that you can do that you couldn't do before. Uh, I think it's not on the same level as the Abyss. I think that's just probably the best one of the bunch. But I think it's definitely effective. Maybe even Spark of Molly might also be like top top tier. I think Inferno doesn't get quite come close because the condition here is a little bit uh, bit weaker overall. Life Taker is. A Void Gauntlet, and I like this one a lot, because <laughs> it goes back to my old days of doing very trolly builds once again, only that no longer will that build be trolly. I, I showed you already that I used to actually run a Void Gauntlet and, and Great Axe in Wars, that's going to be strong with Abyss, but another thing that I used to run in duels, just for fun, was a Dex build with a Void Gauntlet offhand for debuffing and rooting, uh, and try to like force people into the, into the Oblivion, and... <laughs> This thing, it's a lot easier because it has negative energy. Your ranged attacks afflict disintegrate uh, for one for, for uh, eight seconds on both weapons. That's kind of funny in itself, right? So you can throw out the Void Gauntlet attacks to apply, apply disintegrate, or you can use other weapons. You can use ranged weapons. You can use this with a bow or with a musket, and you can apply disintegrate. But also, uh, if higher, this weapon scales with dexterity. And that obviously means that something like a Void Gauntlet Spear would work a lot better together. You just throw Void gets Gauntlet stuff from range, and if the enemy gets close, then pull out the spear. I like that. I think that's funny. I think that's interesting. I like that they're making like unusual weapon combinations more possible with this. Uh, if you choose this with a bow or a musket, obviously your escape potential is um, very limited. You gotta be very careful with that. Um, but but it could be fun. And you have Keen along with that, you have life stealing and you have refreshing move. Uh, so actually, you have uh, three perks here, right? Which is, 
which is also interesting. And then you can get another perk on top of that. So you could just get enchanted on top of that as well. Very cool. I like this a lot. I think this is interesting. Freya's uh, Francisca is a throwing hatchet in the in every sense. So the perk here is Throne Mastery. Throne X abilities reduce all X cooldowns by 25%. All X cooldowns, I'm probably assuming it's all hatchet cooldowns. It has a 5 seconds cooldown though, so that kind of limits it a little bit. And then the weapon itself comes with Empowering Rending Throw and Refreshing Move. I would say of, of all the skills here, this is probably one of the weakest ones. Uh, just because Throne ability cooldowns are already very, very short. Um, and yeah, <laughs> the reduction is only once every five seconds, so it's not that often. I guess it's just so you, they prevent you from just constantly spamming all of the abilities. I could be entirely wrong on this, I will say this. I, I could be entirely wrong, this could feel much, much better in game than I'm imagining it. I'm just, at the moment, I'm feeling like it might be kind of secondary to a lot of other things, just because throwing hatchet in general is not that strong. But they also buffed a lot of different aspects of throwing hatchet. So through that, if if throwing hatchet in itself becomes effective enough to actually be good, which is possible, then this hatchet could suddenly be very, very good. So I'm actually, I'm going to be very careful with my assessment of this here. And I'm just going to say right now, at first glance, it seems like, you know, with that internal cooldown, there, there are just better ones on the side here. But it could turn out to be very, very good if the right conditions are met. Also, this has uh, the upside of, of having a gem slot, which uh, some of the other ones don't have. Uh, so, for example, look at a life taker here that doesn't have a gem slot, has an extra perk instead, uh, and you still get the random perk on top of that. So, that's also nice. Some weapons will lose some damage here, right, by not having gem slots. You'll, you'll notice that, for example, uh, the Abyss by default doesn't have a gem slot. It gets, it gets more damage for having less mana, but you don't get the, the Opal slot normally. Then we have Michael. <laughs> they called it Michael. I don't. I don't know why. But I feel like this was like a work in progress name, and they were just kind of like, oh yeah, what do we call it? Oh, it's called Michael, and then they just stuck with it. Uh, first perk here, refreshing cleanse. Or main perk here, refreshing cleanse. Uh, cooldown reduced by five percent a block. Uh, no, sorry, cooldown reduced by five percent. And I think I think this is separate because it doesn't have any period in between. But uh, I think. On block, lose one debuff. I think that's how it's meant to be. Uh, which is pretty good, right? So basically, you're almost never having any debuffs because the moment you get any debuffs on, you just block. Uh, you get counter attack uh, on block, you get a power, and you get healing defense on block, you get healing. So you get an insane amount of things every time you block. So you just block, attack twice, block, attack twice. The best bet for any enemy fighting you is basically to just ignore you. Um, because you're probably not doing that much damage. <laughs> you have like life stealing, you have all this healing, you have all this counter stuff, but... Yeah, it's not really an artifact that has much going on on the aggressive side, so maybe that's what's going to hold it back, but it's also a shield. So we're going to see how this works out. This could be could be very funny. It could be very trolly, at least. Uh, I think the healing defense perk in itself is actually almost scarier than the cleanse, though. So Because um, flail comes with a ton of cleanse potential anyways. And then we have the wall. This is also one the devs talked about already. Shield wall uh, gain 5% base damage reduction. Pretty sure this is base damage reduction as in damage taken, not damage dealt, and because otherwise it's usually it's worded differently. Uh, also, you cannot dodge but have 33% more stamina, so you're just blocking. You also get Chromatic Ward on top of that and take 25% less damage from all elemental sources. Very, very interesting. Um, this is probably going to be like the, the thing for tanks and wars, um, just, just holding the shield even harder. And you get sturdy on top of that and keenly fortified, uh, so yeah. Good stuff, I, I like to see this. Actually curious, uh, for once I'm gonna look down here. Oh, I dropped some hero, never mind. I was gonna say that there's a few interesting mobs I could have, made, have it dropped from. Hero works, easy. And we have Pestilence. Pestilence was one that was like weirdly worded in one of the articles. It's actually pretty cool. I actually think this could be uh, could be interesting in general. Um, maybe you could like combine this with the uh, Strength Fire Staff or something. I'm not entirely sure. That could work. But then you could also just go in, so hmm. I don't know, but uh, anyways, uh, this comes with Blighted Enchantment. Attacks against targets inflict a stack of poison and a decrease to incoming and outgoing healing uh, effectiveness by 7% per stack for 6 seven seconds. Uh, this is interesting because it's more than just uh, a normal um, anti here, right? So you play crits is down here and you have disease uh, reducing healing effectiveness on the target. 
but it's also the outgoing healing. So if you're focusing a healer with this, then they will also heal others less. And I think this would basically be amplified if they try to heal themselves, because um, then their own healing on themselves is reduced and the amount of healing they get is also reduced. So technically it's it's a 21% healing reduction, but you can't really double it, but it's, it's technically a lot more... Practically a lot more, I think, if it works like that, uh, when a healer tries to heal themselves after being focused by this. Uh, <laughs> the only thing this is missing is uh, plague splitting grenades. And then you also get Pest, which is 15% uh, damage against poisoned and diseased targets. Again, no gem slot here, so kind of like competes with, with Opel basically, but you're gonna have this applied all the time. You do any attack, you apply the poison, and everything afterwards will deal more damage. I really like this. And you also have Keen with Plague Crits, I like that, so that's like pretty much guaranteed, though, on the other hand, on the Blunderbuss, you kind of don't need Keen, it's like, you cr one of your shots is probably going to crit somewhere. Anyways, I think it's a cool one, I think it's a fun one, uh, I like it, and this is one I definitely want to try out, uh, for utility, I just really like utility weapons in general, and see what, what it can be combined with to make it really disgusting, if you can push, like, close to 100% anti-heal if you combine it with a, with a Void Gauntlet, for example. Last but not least, in terms of weapons, we have Serenity. Serenity is a great sword. Uh, perk here is Balanced Blade. Offensive stands a 2% empower per attack for 5 seconds, with a maximum of 10 stacks. And defense stands a 2% fortify when hit uh, for 5 seconds, with a maximum of 10 stacks. Now, that by itself, I, I don't know, I don't know, like the, the empower is, is nice. Uh, in PvE, obviously massive. Like, no doubt, because you're gonna have this, like, all the time. In PvP, the amount of hits that you actually do on a target, or, or attacks you do on a target, is not necessarily that high that you're gonna get that many stacks out of this unless you're just sitting in that stance consistently. And Empower is something that the Greatsaw generally doesn't lack. You, you generally get a lot of that already. A Fortify, kind of same-ish, like you don't really need it with the Greatsaw because it's already so tanky in so many ways and has so much block and block is not, like the stamina is not affected by the Fortify as far as I know, uh, unless I change that. So, yeah, I think the impact of Balanced Blade itself is actually not that big. But then it comes with Trenchant Strikes as well as Trenchant Crits and this is heavy melee attacks deal 23% damage and 34% crit damage. Uh, again, these values may be off. Um, here, what's what's really worth keeping in mind here is um, the these perks are working differently now. They work off light heavy attacks as well, of quick heavies. Um, but I checked this after the the last comments that I saw about that, which confused me because I was saying, you know, uh, this is something you primarily benefit from on on the uh, Warhammer, for example, where you actually do light heavies, whereas on the Greatsword you don't really do that. The greatsword, it's 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 like you know, it goes beyond that. The greatsword actually does doesn't have any light heavies. You actually do a full heavy, or you don't, as, as, at least according to the in-game data. So um, I did remember that correctly. Uh, so you need to actually do the full full heavy to get these perks off with the greatsword. You can't do any in-between thing, and uh, that makes it. It would have been very strong if it was greatsword before the change, but I think it's pretty easy to avoid. Greatsword heavies most of the time. Obviously in PvE this is going to be ridiculous, especially because you're going to get it uh, crit heavies, you're getting free backstabs anyways from, from PvE content, so uh, this is going to be wild for that. In PvP, I, I don't know if I would choose this weapon over another one. I think I'll probably choose another one and then have the Greatsword just be a, a normal Greatsword uh, with different perks that I think would likely be more effective. Because you're also losing the gem slot for this, so you're just very much relying on the heavy attacks, um, and I mean, the Greatsword just never is full stamina, so that's, like, the Opal is just guaranteed there. You get Ref move too, that's cool. Uh, overall, I think, very, very, very strong in PvE, but not that crazy in PvP, and kind of gonna make it hard to balance the Greatsword as well, because it's gonna be super overpowered in PvE again, which kind of was what they wanted to get away from, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Then let's move over to the armor, starting from the heavy part here for once. And uh, here we have some very interesting uh, start out right away. We have Unyielding, which is a uh, helm with hard head. 
PvP only receive 20% less damage from critical hits. As far as I understand it, this is likely the same kind of modifier that you have, uh, like, like from, from Resilient, right? So this is, uh, if someone has a, a crit multiplier that's lower than your output, then they just don't do any extra crit damage. So if, if you have one po or like if you have 20% crit negation before and they have a, a 1.4 crit multiplier, then as far as I understand it, this would just reduce it to a, a 1.0 multiplier, just normal damage. I don't think this is just a 20% reduction of existing crit damage. Otherwise, it would be extremely weak. If it's not, then it's actually a very interesting choice, even potentially for medium users maybe even light somehow like that would be extremely awkward and uh, along with that you get refreshing and shirking fortification definitely not bad perks to have either the second one is dark uh, void void dark plate uh, this one comes with dark reinforced a 20 percent armor increase uh, this is good ish but not as good as some people think i i looked at some of the numbers uh haven't had 100% verified that because they also haven't looked at the new armor values and everything, but like hypothetically on old armor, on 600 gear scale armor, I think uh, this would be around, like in medium and heavy both, this would be around 5% extra damage mitigation, roughly. Uh, you know, if someone has done the full math, let me know. I'm interested. But I think this, you know, because of the way that armor is calculated, I think this is not actually completely insane. I know that on PTR, everyone is just farming this right now, and I think this is actually not as crazy unless I'm completely missing something with it. Uh, it also comes with Enchanted Ward, uh, less damage from heavy and light attacks, and Physical Aversion, less damage from ranged physical attacks. Now, I think this is also a problem, right? Because um, I think these are not the best mitigation perks you can have. You can have Grit Ward if you go for like a heavy build. You can have uh, Elemental Aversion. You can have Health. And I think all of those perks are likely better than this for survivability, uh, which is what these perks also do. So I think that's going to hold it back a little bit further. Uh, at least it has a gem slot, I guess. But uh, yeah, for now, I think this may not be as good as, as people think. Uh, we'll see if that actually comes true. Looks cool, though, so that's nice. Then we have Magnetic Gauntlets. Magnetic Gauntlets are spicy because um, I think there's actually more use potential here than people think. Uh, magnetic increases the crit chance by 50%, but the crit damage is reduced by 50% as well. This is very unique in so far that some effect, like some weapons don't even care much about crit damage, right? Uh, with a blunderbuss, with a... Um, with a greatsword, you're not really going to care about your crit damage output because it's probably not going to be above the resilient cap or what used to be resilient anyways depending on who you're hitting so whatever but uh yeah i, I wouldn't be like i wouldn't be worried too much about losing the, the crit damage if you don't have extra crit damage in the first place but the crit chance then is suddenly interesting because there are other effects that are tied to crit for example you have like like plagued strikes that is uh, play crit sorry that's just tied to crit you have some perks on the great that are tied to crit uh, and if you can just basically guarantee like consistent crit uptime uh, that, is, that is very good. There's other useful perks that I, I want to try out that could also work very, very well with this. Uh, I'm not sure if 50% increase means 50% of your actual crit chance, or if it's just a flat 50%. Uh, so we'll have to find out about that, but I think this could be interesting. Then you get refreshing, nice, and you get physical aversion again, not that great, but at least you have another perk in the gem slot. So I would say this is better than Dark Void, but at least when it comes to the additional perks. And the pants, the heavy pants are freedom. You have unending freedom stun slows and roots expire 25 percent faster uh, on top of that you also get more freedom and you get enchanted ward once again i think this is not the best but it's also not the worst in general i think this is definitely an interesting option uh depending on what you need like i, I could see certain like tank builds that, that just say okay i just want to get out as as best as possible uh, damage is not a problem for me i just block most of that but i just i, I don't want to be cc'd for too long and I don't know how this interacts with like caps and stuff because obviously you have certain caps uh, with things like well, with, with with other things in the game like <laughs> like cooldown reduction for example and uh, freedom is weird in that regard uh, and I'm, I'm really wondering what would happen if you had like a full heavy set uh, freedom on every piece uh, and then unending freedom I'm, I'm very curious what, what, what would be happening in that case uh, I'll have to look into that I have to try it out if it actually works if you can like basically almost entirely negate CC because then obviously this would be very, very interesting and you could also technically run it in medium. Then we have the medium pieces. First one here is Jin Headwrap. Jin Headwrap is uh, 
shrug off, non-crowd controlling debuffs expire 20% faster on you, and then you have Vigor and Invigorated. Again, these values are completely off. Don't get excited. <laughs> I, it's, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, I, am I missing something? Or is this just the worst artifact? Like, I, I don't know what, like, I don't know what this is supposed to be for. I can't, can't tell you. We're moving on to the next one because I just don't know. I don't... This is just like, they get, they get one, two pieces. Like, like one and a half pieces of Vigor Invigorated in one. <laughs> At least put the perks together instead of putting this on top of it. I, I, I don't know. Very strange. Very weird. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, but then we have uh, Nimble Leather Coat. Highly refreshing, reduces max cooldowns by 10%. Also comes with refreshing itself, and I think this would likely uh, go above the the, cool, the refreshing perk limit. Otherwise, I think this doesn't make much sense. So I, I think this is uh, gonna be a way to get an extra 10% CDR that you otherwise not would not be able to get. It also comes with health, which is also nice. It actually has like good perks outside of that as well, which is helpful. So I like this one. I think this one could be very good. We have ghoul gloves. This comes with a Ghoul's Touch. Uh, when you hit a foe below half health, transfer one debuff for three second cooldown. This sounds toxic. This sounds very interesting as a ranged player if you get hit by something. Um, but it's 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 conditional, right? Uh, you know, the enemy has to be below 50%. You have to have a debuff on you. Whereas a lot of the other perks are just straight up, you do a lot more, you get a lot more. So I find it difficult to place this. It does, however, also come with refreshing and elemental aversion, which I think, again, uh, very good to have. And then you could just throw health on that or something uh, and a gem slot as well. So, yeah, overall good. Leather attuned, or attuned leather pants, rather. Um, this is weird. Uh, I don't know if the um, if this value is actually off too, right? So, so if you look at the other items here, they have 32 magnify. Um, this seems to actually be a higher value. This could be bugged, but I think this actually has a higher value to your primary perk. So that's magnified already. And then along with that, it also has well-rounded. It definitely has well-rounded. I'm not entirely sure about this, but it, it is labeled. No, it's labeled the same way. It's, it's hard to tell. But yeah, I, I would assume this is a higher value. And then you have well-rounded, which gives you plus 10 to all other attributes along with that. And that is absolutely crazy, right? Because we have new capstones that are at 25 uh, points in an attribute. And you just need to invest 10 points into that and you can reach those capstones with these pants and you can basically like reach, yeah, all capstones if you want to, which are generally useful, right? You have like stuff like CDR in there, uh, or light attack damage or something. So this could be a very, very valued one, very interesting one. Also comes with refreshing and elemental version. Again, very good perks. I think this could be ending up uh, being one of the most favored one, one of the best ones, depending on how things go and how highly these perks are valued. And then we have the light ones. Uh, Grey Wizard's Head. I, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if it's bugged or if it's literally just more int. Because like if you compare that to the to the medium pants or the magnified, again, magnified could be entirely bugged, so who knows? And then it wouldn't really be that great. It's the only one that has like locked intelligence. So I'm assuming this is actually the correct value. Uh, it just is a question of is the other one correct? Um, it seems weaker in comparison to, to me. It's like my impression is that it's not that that great get refreshing physical aversion like physical aversion also not that great uh, don't really see much of a point in that kind of definitely uh, bottom tier from what i can tell unless i'm missing something featherweight jacket comes with weightless this armor is weightless so this means that if you equip it it doesn't count into your equip load this is basically only for one purpose, right? This would be very useful if you could equip multiple uh, artifact armors at once, but you can only equip uh, one weapon, one armor, and one jewelry. I actually don't know how shields factor into that. But uh, since you can't um, equip multiple, you can't just get another cool heavy pants artifact along with that in a light loadout or something, uh, but rather you just um, use this to equip a kite shield and light. That's what it's for. Like... That's a very big trade-off just to be able to equip a kite shield. I gotta be honest. <laughs> I, feel, I, I, I asked a question for the devs, and I have a feeling they may answer that question with this answer instead of giving me the answer I'm hoping for. And I, I don't think that would be a good answer because I don't think this is a good item. I don't think you should be like, you know, doing this and, and equipping a kite shield instead of getting if, whatever, like 30 more attribute points or getting 20% 
uh, resilient or something along those levels. It's just not on the same level at all, in my opinion. You just have a kite shield. Uh, comes with refreshing and physical version. Again, physical version also not that great. And we have Tumblr shoes. Same perks here once again. So let's talk about that. Uh, this comes with shirking blessing. Successfully dodging an attack gives you an empower and a fortify for five seconds. 15% uh, empower, 25% empower, fortify. You're also healed for 200 plus 2% 2 of your max HP. This is absolutely interesting, right? There's a lot going on here. Uh, I think people will definitely want to try this out. I think this is one of the season pass ones. Uh, so yeah, season pass here. Uh, that That is going to be one that everyone gets. So everyone's going to run it for a while, basically. So on the free pass. Uh, yeah, I, I am not a fan of artifacts being on the season pass. I will I'd say that. Uh, we can talk about that more in the future. Uh, I don't think that's where they should be. Uh, just because what if you miss out on the season and then this becomes best in slot and you can never get it. So I think at least they have to put it somewhere else afterwards. Uh, somewhere where it's obtainable still. Because otherwise I think this could create a pretty bad imbalance. Especially because this is one of the better perks. That brings us to Endless Thirst, which is also from the season pass. And this one is from level 100. Uh, fortunately, it's not exactly insane, but at the same time, it's probably the best jewelry um, jewelry perk that we currently have, I would say, for, for in terms of artifacts. So, yeah, you kind of have to grind that season pass. Again, not a fan of that being locked behind that, what will happen after the season. Uh, in this case, the Thirst uh, health potions are 33% stronger, but the cooldown is 20% longer. I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. And it also comes with both Empowering Toast as well as Fortifying Toast. Uh, as far as I can tell, yeah, these are exclusive labels. These are both consume. And there aren't really that many important perks on, on Earring, especially because Refreshing Toast was nerfed to 10% anyways. Uh, so normally you can't get these together. With this Earring, you can get these two perks together. So that in itself is also very strong. Uh, so this one will probably be the go-to earring for a lot of players. Maybe paired with a refreshing or something. Uh, so yeah, that being locked on the season pass. Sketch. I, I don't know. I don't know what made them think that putting things on the season pass is a, is a good design choice. Uh, we'll find out what the feedback on that is. Blood drinker is a ring. This one's weird. Because this is... Um, Minus 25% damage, but plus 25% lifesteal. Comes with leeching as well, and comes with hardy. Now, I could see a use case for this, though, and that is um, PvE. People have been saying, you know, my, my trench and recovery got nerfed. I can't solo PvE farm the same amount of mobs anymore. And if you do that, then damage isn't your biggest problem in that moment, right? You just want to survive long enough, like, deal, deal enough damage consistently so you can survive. But, like, also... <laughs> Nerfing your damage also means you're life stealing less effectively, so that's a bit weird too. Um, but yeah, I could see this still being being used for for PVE content if it works out. Um, but generally, other than that, I don't think it's much much use for this as much as people love life stealing. The stopwatch is uh, stunny gaze. Activate taunt gems first of all. I I don't I don't know what that's supposed to mean in that context. Like. Um, like stuns activate taunt gems, I suppose. Also, but but most of them do anyways. <laughs> Who knows? But also, stuns last 100% longer, but base damage is decreased by 5%. Uh, awkward. Well, it comes with pure fine health. Guess that's nice, but you can't even get. Um, well, I mean, you can. I guess you can get stem recovery on third perk, but like you can't even get like a, a stem recovery plus uh, any kind of protection perk on this. So that's already not that great. And then. Most stuns are long enough, right? Like, shield bash is long enough. Uh, Sundering shockwave, sure, could be longer, especially if the enemy has a lot of freedom. And that's kind of a, <laughs> that's kind of where it ends, isn't it? Sure, I'm forgetting one or two stuns right now, but there aren't really that many uh, effective stuns in New World, anyways. So, yeah, um, don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't think this one will be used much. In general, I don't, unless I'm missing something with the activate taunt jump spot, and it's somehow really good for tanking. Uh, yeah, strange. And then there's the last artifact that uh, is just bugged. I don't know what happened to that. I, it, it was meant to exist, I guess, and then got replaced with Lost Stopwatch. Uh, it was from the PvP track, apparently. 
uh, while the last stopwatch is not. So, yeah, that's another one. Anyways, these are my thoughts on the artifact so far. Of course, we'll talk about them more in depth when we can test them and we can find where we can find them and everything. So, if you're interested in that, consider subscribing, click the bell so you're notified. Of course, we talk about other things regarding the expansion as well. And if you want to get early trading tips before I post the trading tips video, then consider supporting me on Patreon, where I give those out very frequently. Thanks to my patrons, for I do exactly that. Thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.